Now we would quickly revise the industrial policy resolution of 1956. The industrial policy resolution of 1956 laid down the following objectives. Number one, to accelerate the growth rate of industrialization taking place in the economy. Number two, to lay down the foundation of setting up of heavy and basic industries in the country. Next, to expand the public sector and and thrust the major responsibility of industrialization on the public sector. Fourth, to reduce disparity in the income and wealth. Fifth, to prevent monopolies and concentration of wealth and income in the hands of small members or individuals in the society. Next. Now let us discuss the features of the Industrial Policy Resolution 1956. The features of IP 1956 can be categorized in five segments. Number one, the industries were classified in three schedule, Schedule A, Schedule B and Schedule C. Schedule A were those industries which were the exclusive responsibilities of the government or the state. Schedule B comprised of those industries which were owned by the state but would be supplemented in their efforts with related to management and control by the private sector. But the whole sole responsibility lying majorly with the state. And those industries which were not included in Schedule A and B were included in Schedule C and they were left open to the private sector. Two, stress out the role of cottage and small scale industries. The Industrial Policy 1956 assigned a major role in the process of industrialization to the development of small scale and cottage industry. Based on the Gandhian principle, the main aim was to encourage small scale and cottage industries because they were more labor intensive and required less capital. Third, industrial licensing. Industries in the private sector could be established through license by taking an, obtaining a license from the government. Industrial concession. Many benefits, concessions and rebate were given to the private entrepreneurs for setting up industries in the backward region. Small scale and cottage industries. Small scale and cottage industries were encouraged because of the given reasons. Number one, they were labor intensive, hence played an important role in generating employment on large scale. Two, they had large potential for generating self-employment opportunities. Three, they required less capital. Four, they encourage production of goods and services which could be exported and hence help in earning foreign revenue. Fifth, they also act as ancillaries or feeder industries to the large scale industries. And six, they so show locational flexibility and can be set up easily in remote and backward areas where resources are limited. Next, we come to foreign trade. We know that trade was unfavorable for India in, in times of British regime. Basically, we were exporters of raw material and importers of finished goods. After independence, certain prominent changes were brought with regard to foreign trade. Decline in the share of agricultural goods being exported. 2. Increase in the share of export 
of manufactured and industrial good. 3. Change in the direction of export trade and import trade. That means the goods which were being imported and exported, their composition was changed. The nature and the types of goods change. Now we were basically exporting finished good and no more exporting raw material. And earlier we were basically importing finished goods. Decline of Britain as a main trading partner. So now we were no longer maintaining monopoly of trade with Britain. Trade policy. The trade policy that we adopted was an inward looking trade strategy or an import substitution strategy. This strategy basically focused on importing of finished goods from Britain and other countries was now being replaced by manufacturing these goods domestically in order to cater the needs of the economy and in turn being coming an exporter of finished goods. In other words, there were two objectives behind adopting an inward looking trade strategy. This was to make the economy number one self-reliant or self-sufficient by producing all goods that we required indigenously and number two, it also helped in the drain of foreign revenue which was being spent on paying import payments. This strategy of import substitution means substituting imports with domestic production. Thus, this was done by imposing different kinds of restrictions, tariffs, taxes on imported goods, making them costlier for the economy and hence giving preference to the goods being domestically produced. The inward looking trade strategy helped in saving foreign exchange. It created a large market for domestically produced goods and also built a strong industrial base for the economy. This was all related to the trade policy adopted in India. The criticism laid against the trade import substitution trade strategy are as follows. It did not lead to growth. That means it did not encourage the domestic producers to expand and flourish as they were not receiving any competition and they were being protected. Lack of competition led to lack of modernization. They took no initiatives to improve their techniques, quality and bring upgradation in their goods and commodities being produced as they were not facing any competition. Growth of inefficient public monopolies. Public monopolies were created and these public sector industries producing goods did not live up to the market requirements were incurring huge losses were turning out to be sick units and not operating efficiently next did not lead to efficiency efficiency was lacking so this was all related to import substitution trade strategy. So next class when we meet we would continue with the remaining portion of the chapter and proceed to the next chapter that is poverty. Please take care. Thank you.